Right now, we're in the waning hours of Grimace's birthday celebration. I want to have one last hoorah, though, today and discuss some things that make me Grimace. Welcome back to Alternative Jargon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Alternative Jargon, episode number 12. Um, This is not as easy an episode as last week. Last week, the submarine really, really carried me through the episode. I mean, that was 20 minutes of free content. This week's going to be a little bit harder. I'm going to have to put in some actual work. I sat down. It's Thursday evening. This podcast releases tomorrow. And you may be asking, why are you so strenuous on yourself to release this thing? Uh, You have 17 views on each of your most recent podcasts. Look, you don't get to 18 without consistency, guys. So let's hop into it. Let's get it going. It's episode number 12. Hopefully we can break 12 views on this one. Uh, But today, um, I have a little bit more free content. Now, it's not as good as the submarine, but that is not saying much because the submarine was so good, the submarine was so easy, the submarine paved the way for every person who posts anything online uh, for the past 10 days or so. With that being said, today let's talk about number two, the number two pick. You know, the number two pick in the draft never gets talked about as much as the number one, but let's not underestimate his talent, his raw talent, his hard work ethic. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about Grimace. Today we're talking about um, some things that make me Grimace. I've got my commemorative McDonald's Grimace cup with me here today. Now this is not a Grimace shake. This is a vanilla iced coffee. I'll give you guys a little bit of ASMR here. Listen to the ice. All right, there you go. Now that you're all tingling or whatever, you know, ASMR is a weird, weird thing. It's a really weird thing. Every once in a while, I'll get an ASMR video pop up on my page, and these people usually... um, The most random people, but usually... It's an attractive woman uh, doing ASMR, and you have to wonder, why does this person have 8 million followers? Is it because they're scratching their fingernails on a microphone, or is it just because they're another uh, influencer? Is it just because um, people want to follow an attractive girl? Who knows? But uh, ASMR is an interesting thing. I always see videos, and it's like, Today, I discovered a new trigger, guys. I discovered a new trigger. Today, we're going to be scratching this piece of metal with my new custom fingernails and listen to the sound it makes, right? It's like, let's discover a new trigger. Very interesting world. Now, I'm not bashing it. Uh, there are some fun ASMR videos. I don't, I don't watch them, but... Um, maybe I'm desensitized because I haven't had the tingles in a while, guys. Maybe I just haven't found my new trigger. I don't know. But anyway, we are already digressing. But isn't that what podcasts are for? Look, I've got to fill this time somehow. Uh, my first few podcasts were always like, um, they were like 20 minutes long. I stuck right to the script Whatever I had written down in my little Google Doc. By the way, I'm running out of space. I've used five gigabytes on Google Drive. I'm going to have to start paying for Google Docs soon. That's not good. I'm already paying for my uh, iCloud storage. What, What world are we living in where I have to pay for Google Docs? But anyway, you know, I got to fill this time somehow. So let's talk about, uh, Grimace, guys. Um... You know, the McDonald's celebrity meals or the special meals that they come out with, 
always have very, very, very interesting ways of marketing that are not at all related to McDonald's. Or are they? We'll get into that in a second. Um, McDonald's, their their celebrity meals, their special meals, um, there was the Travis Scott meal back in 2020, which by the way, I think I bought like three or four of those burgers. It was a guilty pleasure. They were pretty good. I don't think they were probably any different than the regular quarter pounder, but because they came in a special box, they just tasted better. There was, of course, the Grimace Shake. That's out right now. Happy birthday to my man, Big G. Uh, There was the Cardi B and Offset meal this past February. That one wasn't as popular. And then there was the Saweetie meal. Came with some kind of special sauce. No, did it? I don't know. Wasn't it just sweet and sour? I don't know. Then there was the... J Balvin meal. There's been a few other ones, but none have been as successful as the Travis Scott meal and now the Big G shake, the Big G birthday boy shake. Those ones are all stars on McDonald's starting five. Uh, Grimace is the number two pick in the world of content right now behind the submarine, but McDonald's, he is the number one overall pick right now. These Grimace TikToks are weird. Uh, so the shake came out a few weeks ago and out of nowhere, there's videos of people reviewing the Grimace shake in the parking lot of McDonald's. And then the camera cuts to them like being tortured in, um, a drainage pipe covered in purple paint. I don't know how these things start. I don't know where they come from, but I think that McDonald's has sleeper agents disguised as people on TikTok. Uh, to sell their products, and to make it look like a grassroots marketing scheme. Now, this is obviously a conspiracy, but it's just weird. You know, a few years ago with the Travis Scott meal, they had the thing, uh, you pull up to the window, you know I am here, play the song, yada, yada, yada. Um, Now, I don't actually think McDonald's is doing this, but I would love... If it, they did actually have sleeper agents on TikTok, I would love to hear that sales pitch. All right, guys, so we're going to release this shake. Uh, Johnson, how are you planning to attack the marketing for this thing? Well, boss, I think just maybe we get a couple of teenagers on TikTok to post videos of themselves in what appears to be a dark web torture video after... Uh, They say they're going to test the shake. I really think that could sell. Johnson, (laughs) you did it again. Yeah, you know, break out the sales pitch. Break out the storyboard. Uh, To me, that's a really funny scenario. Um, But hey, they uh, they keep doing it. What's the next one going to be? Who is going to be the next McDonald's meal? We will just have to wait and see. I'm surprised there's not like a Zelensky meal. Like a, where's the Ukraine meal at? All right. Forget about sending Ukraine another $100 billion. Give Zelensky a McDonald's meal. And the war would probably have been over uh, before it even started. You know, what are we doing here? World peace. Uh, But to relate to McDonald's, I stumbled across an article today about how aspartame might be getting labeled soon as a carcinogen. Now, if you don't know, aspartame is an artificial sweetener that's in uh, all your favorite diet sodas like Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, and on and on and on. If it has the word diet in it, it's 50-50. It's probably either aspartame or sucralose. Uh, But aspartame has long been... By the way, hold on one second. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Um, I've heard people pronounce aspartame, or the artificial sweetener formerly known as, um, in a lot of different ways. Let's, Let's listen to a video here. 
Humans have evolved many skills. We have an ad, guys. We have an ad. And it's not skippable. Sorry. Sorry. Let's learn how to say it. We are looking at how to pronounce the name of this artificial non-saccharide sweetener 200 times sweeter than sucrose. How do you go about pronouncing it? Aspartame. Ah. All right, guys, I was right. I was right. The mysterious man in this video... Um, I was right. By the way, who makes those YouTube videos? Who are the guys that sit down and go, today I'm going to make a video about how to pronounce this. Like the videos that come in handy on YouTube, but then you think about it and you're like, who actually made this? Who took the time out of their day to do something so helpful? Those are the people that we should be electing to public office. Let me find the guy who made the how to pronounce aspartame video and let's get him riding in the motorcade. All right. So aspartame, as I've just figured out how to say it, um, it might be labeled a carcinogen. There's, there's been a lot of debate about this thing. They gave it to lab rats and it did this, but then the dosage was too high and this and that. And I don't keep up with research because I don't have time for that. But I just know that it's long been a very um, controversial sweetener, as they all are. Um, I remember Pepsi a few years back came out with New Diet Pepsi and they put on the bottle, now aspartame free. We switched to sucralose, which probably also kills lab rats. But anyway, uh, go out and get your Diet Coke now before they take the good stuff out of it. We all know that if the recipe has to change, it's you know it's not going to be the same. Go out and get your cancer before it's gone. I know that I'm probably going to go stock up, and you should probably do the same. Um, and I'm wondering how long it's going to be until you go to buy a can of Diet Coke and it's labeled with like the big tobacco logo, right? It says, warning, this product is known to cause cancer. And now, unfortunately, Diet Coke only comes in menthol and tobacco flavor. All right, what are we going to do when that happens? The world might fall apart. What is Donald Trump going to do when that happens? You ever see the video where people eat like him for a day and it's like 12 Diet Cokes, like all this fast food. I'll tell you what, that guy is living. Everyone wants to make fun of him for it. Are you kidding me? The dude's what? Late 70s. Still going strong in most regards. Um, and he is just feasting every day on all the worst stuff, but I admire that. I admire that. If I can be 78 years old and somehow still running a presidential campaign with handcuffs on and I'm chugging 12 Diet Cokes a day and I am eating McDonald's and pizza with the crusts cut off or however he does it, that is a successful life. I don't care what your opinion is on the guy. That is a great life. Are you kidding me? That is a, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. By the way, if he's really drinking 12 Diet Cokes a day, I just did the math in my head. I think a Diet Coke has like close to 40 milligrams of caffeine. Uh, it's like 38 or something, but let's round up to 40. That's like almost 500 milligrams of caffeine a day. And I know that's spaced out, but the Don is wired, okay? Donald is wired, I drank a Monster Energy earlier today after work. One of my favorite pastimes is clocking out of my eight-hour shift, going home, sitting on the couch, and cracking a cold Monster. All right, some people go home and they crack the beer. Um, you know, occasionally I do. But, man, cracking that post 
shift monster to keep your day going is an otherworldly experience. I come home, I am exhausted, but I don't just want to sit on the couch and nap the rest of my day away. I don't want to fall into that cycle of coming home from work and the rest of your day is in shambles because you're just too tired. Crack the monster and get on with your day. Go to the gym. Make a podcast. Do something cool. This podcast is not brought to you by Monster yet. Um, but anyway, yeah, Donald is wired. That's almost 500 MGs pulsing through his veins daily. That is awesome. You know, they talk about uh, previous historical figures, political figures who were like on meth, right? Like wasn't Hitler on meth or something? Because back then they just, you know, you had to work around the clock if you wanted to kill all those Jews. Um, And they just would pump people full of stuff. He probably would not have gotten as many kills as he did if he wasn't, you know, awake for 20 hours a day. Uh, Sad as it is to say. But yeah, forget meth for Donald. Um, 12 Diet Cokes a day, you're set, bro. You're set. Uh, But recently I stumbled upon a TikTok explaining uh, that craving American food is not actually craving the food itself. So it's always up for debate. Does America, does the United States really have its own cuisine? When you think of American food, you think of like a a hamburger, a fry. And I want you to think about those words. A French fry. That's not American anymore, is it? All right, a hamburger. Wasn't it made in the the, uh, town of Hamburg? Or is that an urban legend? I don't know. But I will tell you one thing. America does have its own cuisine. And you can find them in strip malls. You can find them off highways. We're talking about fast food. That is American cuisine. And when we crave that food, we crave not the nutritional contents, but we crave the red dye 40. We crave the grease. We crave the salt. Okay, we're not craving a dish. We're craving the raw industrial ingredients that make it up. And it is amazing, all right? There's nothing in the world that can satisfy a fast food craving besides fast food. If I want the $5 cravings trio from Taco Bell with the cheesy gordita crunch wrap and the Doritos Locos taco paired with a zero sugar Baja Blast, just pounding, pulsating with sucralose, there's nothing else in the world that can satisfy that. You give that to a caveman, and he would probably explode, all right? You give that to me, and I am the happiest person in the world, right? If I mean, I could go to the grocery store, and I could pick out all of the same ingredients. I could buy a pound of uh, hamburger. I could fry it up with some taco seasoning. I could uh, buy Doritos, grind them up. Uh, somehow shape them into a tortilla and make a taco with that. You could do all the ingredients yourself and it just wouldn't be the same as real Taco Bell. And that's because the grocery store, unfortunately, does not sell those hard industrial ingredients needed to satisfy that craving. All right. There is nothing that will satisfy it besides the real thing. There's no store brand for fast food, unfortunately. You know, sometimes fast food, you'll go down the freezer aisle and you'll see, oh, White Castle sliders. Oh, Annie Ann soft pretzels. You buy them and you take them home and you make them. And the whole time you're thinking about the real thing. You pull them out of the microwave and they're covered in a layer of dew. Warm dew. They're covered in melted cheese now. They are a thousand degrees to the touch, but the middle is still freezing cold. And 
around, you see your reflection in the microwave, and you say, this is not going to cut it. You still eat it. You scarf it down. You indulge. You absolutely destroy it. But deep down, you know that your craving has not truly been satisfied. That is an empty meal. It's an empty snack. It just didn't do the full job, unfortunately. Did not do the full job. If you want that craving, you want to satisfy that American cuisine craving, you've got to go to the real thing. There's no cutting corners in the USA. None. You want that craving? Name brand, baby. We're talking McDonald's. We're talking BK. Have it your way. We're talking Taco Bell Live Moss. We're talking Chick-fil-A closed on Sunday. We're talking you gotta go big or you gotta go home. All right. That's all there is to it. No cutting corners. All right. And I'm really um, tired of hearing people say, we've got to be a healthier country. No. Let's just let things run their course Eventually, they'll, eat, they'll, they'll even themselves out one way or another. Are all these artificial sweeteners good for us? Probably not. Is all this bad food bad for us? Probably. Um, is eating flaming Hot Cheetos and Takis every day good for my gut health? Most definitely not. But let's let them run our course, and then we'll know the truth. How do you think that the pharmaceutical industry figured everything out? Lab rats can only do so much, guys. Um, Now, I'm obviously not saying let's test on humans, but, you know, in 30 years, when the entire United States population is gone from GMOs, from red dye 40, from seed oils, then we'll know. Then we'll know. And guess what? The next civilization that takes us over is going to go hats off to you guys. You guys figured it out for us. You guys paved the way. Truly. they You paved the way Now we know that they really were carcinogens. Now we know. Now we know. Will it be a mass extinction? Maybe. But we've got to have fun while we can. We can't just put a pause on all this stuff. Don't take the aspartame out of Diet Coke. If it's a carcinogen, then in a few years, we'll truly know. For sure. So let's just have fun while we still can. In other news, the 24th perfect game in Major League Baseball history was thrown last night. I'm recording this on Thursday, as I said. Um, I had to go to bed early last night. I had work this morning. And this morning, while I was uh, browsing my phone uh, in the morning, as I do, I opened Twitter and I saw the first tweet that came up was the 24th perfect game in Major League Baseball history. Wow. It's been 11 years. The last perfect game was thrown in 2012. And it's crazy. In that year, there were three perfect games. What was going on in 2012? I don't know. Mayan calendar much? Maybe. Um, But anyway, the 24th was thrown last night by Domingo Herman. Apparently, he uh, commits domestic violence, so it couldn't have happened to a better person. Um, But, you know, it is still history. And I've got to say, I am so, so glad that the 24th perfect game in Major League Baseball history did not happen in 2020 because they would have made it about Kobe. All the Kobe stuff in 2020 when he tragically passed It started off so cool. Let's take a 24-second violation for Kobe. Let's take an 8-second violation for Kobe. It started off so cool. I was terribly sad when Kobe died. It was a terrible day. 
I still remember where I was. I was watching the Pro Bowl with my dad. It was awful. But it got out of hand pretty quick. It got out of hand pretty quick. We went from let's take a 24-second violation to, uh, oh, 2,400 new COVID cases and eight deaths today in honor of Kobe in Los Angeles County. All right. It went from uh, a 24-second violation to LeBron dropped uh, this amount of points tonight, and if you divide it by eight and multiply it by two, you get 24. Um, okay. All right. I mean, this guy tragically passed away, and it was terrible. It was sad. It was awful. And all of the statistics researchers over at ESPN decided we are going to reach for every little thread we can on this. We are going to do long division. We're going to pull out the Pythagorean theorem to figure out a way to make this into 24 or 8 or 2. It got so out of hand. It got so out of hand. Damian Lillard dropped 24 points and eight three-pointers tonight in honor of Kobe. Um, it was bad. It was bad. Russell Westbrook shot 24% from the field tonight in honor of Kobe. Oh, gosh. You know, it just wasn't good. They were using his death for content. You know, there were two domestic terror attacks today in Los Angeles County in honor of Gigi Bryant. Completely out of hand. Uncalled for, right? Just not good reporting. Not good. By the way, that never happened. That's a joke. As far as I know, I mean, it wouldn't even surprise me if I looked it up and that was a real thing. But yeah, they really milked that. But um, Kobe and that whole ordeal was nowhere near as bad as the whole Nipsey Hussle thing. Oh my goodness, dude. I heard the term, the marathon continues for like, Two years after that guy died, and I still don't even know who he is. Who is who is that guy? Am I completely living under a rock? I don't know. But luckily, the whole Kobe thing, the whole Nipsey hustle thing, uh, are under the bridge, right? We're no longer taking every player's stat line from every single night and... Uh, using the Einstein formula on them to somehow poop out the number 8, 24, or 2. Thank gosh that that era is over. It just became too much. All right. And, you know, speaking of things that happened during COVID, uh, like Kobe dying and things like that. Well, that wasn't during COVID, but it was, you know, kind of close. You know, it's it's crazy to think that COVID really did happen and that it's over. And I don't want to talk about COVID. I really don't. But we do we 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 lived through that. It's crazy, man. We lived through it and now we're on the other side. Welcome to the other side. Here we are. How do you like it? The thing that I'm most upset about about the other side of COVID is that we still don't have 24-hour Walmarts or McDonald's back yet. And I'm not sure if we ever will, unfortunately. Um, You know, we went through all of those struggles to get to the other side, to get to the light at the end of the tunnel from the COVID pandemic, and we can't even go buy a Grimace shake or talk to a Walmart greeter after 11 p.m. What did we do it for? What were all those essential workers, frontline workers, putting in the hours for if not to get back to a world where we can do those things? I want a McChicken at 3 in the morning. We failed. We failed. We failed COVID. 
I know that we're rebounding, but not in the right ways. We need to reopen. We need to reopen Walmart. We need to reopen McDonald's. That should have been the goal from day one. All right. The vaccine rolls out. All right, guys. Fire up the fryers. Right? The new variant isn't that deadly. We don't have to worry about it too bad. All right. Break out as many blue vests as you can. Raise the wage of the night shift at Walmart to like 50 bucks an hour. Come on. It's the worst, the absolute worst outcome of COVID. You know, looking back at COVID though, I had a lot of free time during that time and I wish I used it a little bit better than I did. Admittedly, I was not all that productive during COVID. Um, and recently I've been thinking a lot about how I spend my time. You know, I had a lot of goals this summer, coming into the summer, personal goals, things like that. And uh, I've never thought about the use of my time quite as much as I have this summer. Um, you know, when, when I'm at work, or I go to work almost every day to make some money. But when you're at work, there's almost always constant stimulation, at least at my job. Um, or sorry, what am I talking about? No, no, no. I'm talking about college. So um, when I'm at college, there's like nearly always constant stimulation, right? There's work to do. There's food to go get. There's friends to hang out with. And there's beer to be drank. There's always something to do. I'm lucky enough to have a great group of friends at college um, who are always in the mood to do something. And if I don't want to have downtime, I very rarely have to, luckily. Um, but when you're at home, um, you have a lot more free time. You go clock your eight hours at work every day, and then what? And by the way, speaking of time management, I really hope you're multitasking while listening to this because if not, you're wasting your time. This show is not that important. Go mow the lawn, go drive somewhere, fold your laundry. If you listen to alternative jargon by itself while staring at a wall or something, uh, I need you to seek help. The show is not that good. Please do something while you listen to this. And if you're just watching on YouTube looking at me, at least have like TikTok open in the background. I need you to be like, I need like eight screens at once. I'm hoping that if you're listening to this or watching this, that I'm one of like 20 voices in your ear right now. I need you to be stimulated right now. Okay. Please don't watch this by itself. Sorry, a little bit of ASMR for you to keep you going. But anyway, um, my point through all of this talk of time is that I wish I didn't have to sleep. Every single day, there's a hundred things I want to do, but I don't have the time to do all of them in the day most of the time, right? I wish I could go to work for eight hours, make the money I need to so that I have money for when I'm at college, but then I want to come home, I want to make a podcast, I want to um, maybe watch a movie or read a book, keep myself entertained in the loop of the entertainment, I want to hang out with my friends, I want to go to the gym, I want to do my internship work, and there's quite literally, most of the time, just not enough time in my day to do all of these things if I want to, you know, stay alive. So if I had a superpower, um, I think I would do not having to sleep. And by the way, in the, in the way of all those things that I want to do, I also have to eat, I have to drink water, and I have to get rid of waste, if you know what I mean. Sometimes they can take a little while. All right. It's tough life. It's a really tough life. Um, you want to talk about human evolution. Why have we not evolved to not have to sleep? 
we lose a third of our lives to sleep. Like, if we could have somehow evolved to not sleep, those people that did would be, like, completely flexing on all the other people. They would, they would do 33% more than other people, and that's quite a big percent. Tell Elon Musk to get on that. I don't care about going to Mars or getting a chip in my head. Uh, give me a third of my life back, Elon. When are you going to get to researching that? All right, you want to fight Mark Zuckerberg? How about you make us not be able to sleep, idiot? Get on that, Elon. Gosh. Um, now, don't get me wrong. It feels really good to sleep. I love going to sleep after a long day. But I do have a lot of FOMO about all the things I could be doing while I'm sleeping. Um, by the way, have you ever seen the video of the world record holder for... Uh, not sleeping. Now, I don't think he's the world record holder, like, actually, but he was close. Um, this guy went, hold on, what did I just do? This guy went 11 days without sleeping, and... And he, we're going to, I'm going to show a video today. This is now a reaction podcast. Uh, yeah, so this guy went 11 days without sleeping and he just looks completely fried in this video. So let's go ahead and check it out. I want to break down this clip a little bit. All right, this is obviously a mortal man unfortunately, as we all are, but, um, and this is just my proof that you can't stay up. In case you were doubting me, you can't, but I wish that you could. So let's look at this guy who didn't sleep for 11 days. All right, they're, they're celebrating. I guess this is his friends and family. The hug, look, he's a zombie. All right, Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain did not commit suicide. He just didn't sleep for 12 days, apparently. Look at this guy. Where is it? Where's my bed? <laughs> <laughs> Early on, so day, day three, day four was quite tricky, and I definitely had kind of wondered what I'd taken on, reading whether I could actually do it at all. I think it was just... Wait, 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 wait. He said, day three, day four, I started to wonder what I'd taken on. And then he went for a week longer. This guy's awesome. All right, let's see what else he says. I just sat with what wasn't so good, and then um, a couple of phone calls came in, and suddenly it was like, yep, yeah, let's get on and get this done. By the way, they have a timer on him. Look at this timer. By the way, if you're not watching on YouTube. Uh, I'm trying my best to narrate this, but they have a, like a counting timer on this guy for how long he's been up, and it looks just like the submarine timer for air, uh, except this one's counting up like a football match because I think they're in Britain where they count up. Really what I, what I think might come out of this is that if you change some of the basic parameters of how the brain works, you can get radically different results, and it's not so difficult as people would expect. All right, I'm not really sure what he's talking about. Uh, he's talking about changing the parameters of the brain. I f uh, did they? I think they may have interviewed him before they put him to sleep. I think they need to put this guy to sleep. Uh, he stayed up for 11 days, and now he's talking about reforming his brain. And and look at him right here. He's slumped in front of his laptop. What do you think he's looking at on there? I have $20 that says it's League of Legends. All right. This guy started off. He goes, Mom, I am going to stay up as long as I can to grind out my character. And by day 11, he slumped in front of his laptop talking about uh, phrenology. 
By day 11, he's slumped in front of his laptop talking about reforming his brain. Somebody get this guy to bed now. Get him to bed. Get him to bed. Is there anything else on this? <laughs> they're they're telling him to wake up. And then another person goes, "No, he's fine." And the dude is like on the verge of just passing away in his chair. Um interesting story. How do I stop screen recording on this Mac? Oh, there we go. But anyway, yeah, that was um that was fun. Um that guy, I don't know why he did it, but he did, and that is proof that maybe you shouldn't stay up for 11 days because you'll start off on an MMORPG grind and before you know it, you're talking about reforming your brain. By the way, I mentioned phrenology. Yeah, so I did remember something from psychology class. That was just me looking that up to see if I was talking about the right thing. But anyway, every time someone mentions superpowers, it's always, do you want to be invisible? Do you want to fly? Do you want to grow money from trees? My answer would be, I wish I didn't have to sleep. Now, the next question is, with my genie in a bottle wish of a superpower, is would I make this uh, gift of not having to sleep also apply to other people or not? In other words, would I be the only human who doesn't have to sleep to live, or would I give this gift to all of mankind? And I think this really depends on where you live and the type of economic system that's set up in that country. All right, if you're in a socialist country, uh, like in Scandinavia, then you would let everyone else join you in this amazing new world of staying awake, right? Because you're all even, it's socialism, yada, yada, yada. However, if you're in the land of the free, if you're in a capitalist country, all right, then you want to make sure you're the only person who unlocks this new gift. Imagine what you could do with eight extra hours a day to get ahead of people. I'm getting a second job to get ahead and make more money. You thought I would use this time for recreational purposes? No. No. I want to work 16 hours a day at my minimum wage job. That's it. That's what I want to do. I want to get ahead. I want to get ahead. All right. I want to grind. All right. Let's use our superpowers to get ahead and work eight more hours at our minimum wage job. I can almost taste retirement. All right. And people will say that sounds exhausting. Not anymore. I have the superpower. All right. And we're also going to do two episodes of alternative jargon per week. All right. With all that extra time. Um, you know, if I didn't have to sleep, I would personally run Walmart and McDonald's by myself at night to ensure that we can get back to the good old days. All right. I'll do it myself. I'll cook the nuggets while I'm stirring the grimace shake, while I'm taking in orders, while there's like 20 things beeping in the background. I'll do it all. Let's get back to the way things used to be. But in all seriousness, though, I would probably use the time for recreational things. Um, I would probably just do passion projects like this podcast. I would catch up on watching TV shows and movies without feeling as guilty as I do during the day like it's a waste of time. Because I have all these other things I want to do after work, like go to the gym or make the podcast or something else semi-productive. So when I sit down and I just watch TV for a little bit, I kind of feel guilty. Like, 
you're going to use this as your time today, you know. Um, so yeah, probably passion projects, catching up on entertainment, maybe walking through the woods at night in search of a cult to join. Um, things that I just normally wouldn't get to do if I had to go to sleep. You know, it's weird to think too that everyone in the world sleeps, right? The scariest, baddest person you know cuddles with their pillow for eight hours every night. Think of that, all right? All these figures that we make up in our head to be larger than life, they're just people at the end of the day. Vladimir Putin might slip into his PJs every night in Moscow. Donald Trump, and that guy's got to clip his fingernails once in a while. And yes, Margot Robbie drops a mean dump every single day. Assuming she gets enough fiber in her diet. Hopefully you're healthy. Um, but, you know, it really takes a lot of pressure off of yourself when you start to look around at other people and start to look at life like that. Like, dude, the scariest person you know probably sleeps in the spoon position. The scariest person you know, the person that, you know. We've all got to sleep. We all cuddle under the covers for eight hours a day. We all clip our fingernails. And we all poop. Take the pressure out of your life. All right. That's the mindset. I remember when I first started this podcast, I was terrified when I hit the post button of an episode or a clip to post online. I would like legitimately stare at the publish button on YouTube for like 10 minutes before I pressed it. I was terrified. I was like, you know, I want to do this thing. I think it'd be fun, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it's scary, I guess, to make stuff. And now I don't care. It's just a part of my regular routine, and I no longer care what people really think of me at all. Uh, I enjoy making this podcast for fun, and if people enjoy the stuff I make, great. And if they think it's dumb, great. No matter what, it really doesn't affect me. There's no hesitation anymore for anything. Um, and I'm usually not serious on this show. I, it's a very sarcastic thing, jokes and things like that. But today I'd like to leave you with a serious message, ladies and gentlemen. All right. The thing that makes me grimace most is watching people not live their life to the fullest and do the things they really want to do because of what others think. Uh, so please go do what you want to do. And we will see you next time on Alternative Jargon.